So if she has crow's feet, and if the young stud working at the grocery store is calling her ma'am, you are going to use humor and you are going to ask her, how young are you? Always use positive words, um, even if you hate the person. The thing is, humor is what makes women comfortable, you know. Humor makes women comfortable. Things are the way they are. And when you are funny, women feel comfortable. If, if, and a woman cannot like you more than she is comfortable with you. So you don't want to attack her comfort. Even when your sarcasm is cutting, you know, sarcasm is the key to women. Because you want to mix pleasure and, and pain. You don't want to, to always compliment her, you know, one or two compliments maximum per, per, per rendezvous. You look nice. Thanks for the fun time. That's it. Let's say you have a child. Let's say you have a, a kid. You don't want to let your child play with a gun. When your child is eating, you don't want him to make those noises, eat with an open mouth. You know, the women are the same way. If, if you need, if she's doing, doing the wrong thing, she's not going to like you more because you are letting her do something which will, will hurt her cause. See, the, the reason that you, that you say no to your kid is because when that kid grows up, you don't want that kid hurting her, his cause. You don't want him to have bad table manners. Maybe you don't know much, but you know, hopefully, you know what your limit is. I know so much, but not more. This is what I'm sure of. This works. This is, these things are tried and true. They worked for my father. They, they worked for everyone. This is just plain common sense. You see? If I don't teach you things which are more effective than common sense, fall back on common sense. Because bad education is much worse than no education. When you have no education, you can only fall back on common sense. But badly educated people, they don't follow their gut feelings. And the common sense is washed out of their brain. So for the same reason, you use sarcasm, cutting sarcasm with women. They love it. 
They love cutting sarcasm. Because cutting sarcasm combines two, two things, you know, it's two in one. It combines backbone, backbone is part of your self-esteem, backbone is and self-esteem is how fast you say no to a woman, but only when appropriate. You only tell a woman no when uh, the thing she wants to do goes against uh, common sense or hurts her cause or is against uh, your value system. You know, you don't want to tell a woman no to show her uh, the, that you are a macho boy. But she has to hear no from you because If she sees that there is nothing to push against, she is not going to, to have uh, this feeling of wonderment that makes her like you. See, you have to be looking at the door and, and if she disrespects you, if she commits a relationship felony, if she... If there is a major no-no that, and she doesn't make up for it, you have to walk. And if she knows that you are not able to walk, then you are a nice guy. You are a wimp. And if you are a wimp, she is not going to like you. She is going to leave you after some time because women only dump you when they're hundred percent sure that they're not they're so disgusted with you that they will never go back see us men a woman puts us in a bad mood we get mad we are flustered so, so we dump her, but we still like her, and we end up going back to her. And eventually, she is the one who is going to dump us. Because he, she has more patience. She ha she is tenacious. She has endurance. She is going to wait until she hates your guts and she has no respect for you and that's when she gonna is going to leave you and until then she's going to be an actress and pretend like uh, like everything is normal and then suddenly she is going to blindside you with the with the rejection So telling women no when appropriate is part of your male charisma. But you see, I haven't forgotten about sarcasm and why, why sarcasm is the key to women. Sarcasm is a species of humor. It's a species of humor where where wit or or humor is combined with with uh, disapproval but disapproval isn't expressed as a put down or an outright criticism you are insinuating 
you are insinuating so subtly that it tickles her and she feels you are so funny. And, and that's why humor is the real vehicle for change. You have to master sarcasm to change people. People will not change if you outright criticize them, put them down, or resort to name calling. You, you will show them that you are direct, they will respect you, but they're not going to change their attitude. But if you make a funny skit, or, or you make a sarcastic remark, which is cutting, and there is a, a slight insinuation there, that's going to, to help people improve. So sarcasm is really a key, a key of keys to women because it combines humor any woman would admit that she likes humor. But the brainwashers are not going to admit that they like when a man tells them no. But actually, a woman cannot respect a man who, who cannot uh, deny or something or deny himself not be so available if you are too available girls think that there are no other girls chasing you If no other girls are chasing you, there must be a reason for that. Maybe you have qualities that are not attractive. See, I talk about posture power. What is posture power? You have to make the girls think that every woman in town is after you. That's posture power, and you can do that using your guts. It doesn't necessarily have to be so, although it can be so. For example, you're at a nightclub, go dance on, on, on the stage. And then you see women making eye contact with you. Come down. Kiss them. Let other women see you kissing them. Then leave for a while. Then appear on the stage again. More girls are going to be interested with you because they, they compete. They compete for your attention. They are vain creatures and they cannot stand that you, you uh, first of all, beauty is subjective. So even if a girl is like a five or a six out of a ten and a nine out of a ten saw, saw you with her, well, the 9 out of 10 is 9 out of 10 in your mind. But she is not a 9 out of 10 maybe in the, in the 5 out of 10's mind. And the 5 out of 10 might not be a, a 5 out of 10 in the 9 out of 10's mind. The, this, you know, this is, the beauty is subjective. So women don't perceive each other the way men perceive them. 
you know, she is a 9 out of 10 to you. And the other girl is a 5 out of 10 to herself. But to women, first of all, they understand that attractiveness is more in the mind, you know, and sometimes a beautiful woman might become ugly after two months of you spending, of you knowing her because of her bad attitude. And the plain looking one, you will start seeing her as more attractive as time goes on if her attitude uh, traits are very um, exceptional. And for many other reasons, let's just say things are the way they are. So, so it doesn't matter what a girl is, uh, what, how, how she appears to you uh, on the beauty scale. They're all uh, jealous of each other. They all compete. Competition breeds excellence because they don't always compete in a negative way but trying to sabotage one another they often compete in a positive way by trying to be better and more liberal and not liberal in the political sense but liberal in letting you get away with things then the other girl. This is why uh, the more girls are after you, the greater the magnetic properties of you, the more attractive you are. But so then after after, let's say, nine girls saw you dancing on the stage, which is very confident, and you always want to do things that other people are afraid to do, because women love confidence. So you want to be the first one to dance, uh, and you want to do it uh, on the podium, if possible. Because most men are afraid to dance. Because they, are, they think too much about what people think about them. But the fact is, there is no right or wrong way of dancing. If you can drag your feet, women would subjectively assume that you are a good dancer. So, anyway, whatever, you have to be a daredevil. Anything, you want to show that you are bold and gallant. You have to show that you are a take charge guy. And you want to do things that Everybody else is too scared to, to do. And that's how, because those are the kind of nights that women see in uh, House of the Dragon, that they read uh, about in romance novels. They read about knights. And what do knights do? They do outrageous feats of uh, boldness. But going back to the, to the nightclub scenario. So after enough, you, you have kissed enough plain Janes. After you, have, you have to see that they are looking at you, at your eyes. You are on the podium, they are on the dance floor. You go down and you use physical lures. It's called chancing. 
you're not touching them intentionally, you, you whisper in their ear or you brush accidentally against uh, an erogenous zone, but you are a complete gentleman. This is an accident. And then you go for the jugular. You, 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 you kiss them. Because she is already so impressed that you are there on the dance floor when all the men are just standing near the wall, scared to dance. But you are not after those girls. When the beautiful girls, the, the nines and the tens and the eights, so that so many women are, 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 are hugging and kissing you publicly, what's going to happen? You are going to be, uh, you are going to be uh, making them interested in you. I'm more interested than they have been from the get-go. They may have liked you from the get-go, which is the prerequisite. But once they see every other girl, plain or not, uh, being somewhat intimate with you, these girls, the, the, the hard-to-get ones, are the ones that you are going to work on after afterwards. So, so this is an example of 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 the how women, when when they think every girl is after you, the magnetic qualities of you uh, increase. But you can also fake it. If you are not too available, if you say no, if you use sarcasm, if you are not open, if you leave first, if you hang up the phone first, if you don't see her every day and don't spend your whole day messaging her on, on WhatsApp, Well, she's going to start thinking, if you never take her out on a weekend, she's going to start thinking that all the girls in, in, in the village are chasing you. Whether you may have been in, in prison for three and a half years, uh, and, and, and you just came out of prison, but... If you are not too available, the woman is going to assume that she is not the only person in your life. And thus, uh, and that's why women like married men. Now, I heard some guys say, don't marry because once you marry, uh, you will have no options. But in fact, girls are attracted to married men because married men have a non-hungry aura. So what you have to do is when a woman, you, you never propose to a woman, whether it's girlfriend and boyfriend or husband and wife, you, 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 you keep seeing her until she starts wondering why you are not being aggressive and she proposes to you, at which point you say, well, are you fine, you know, if I have, you know, I'm not really, I, I'm not really into marriage. I don't really believe in marriage. I don't really believe in girlfriends and boyfriends. 
I don't really believe in, uh, you know, in living together, in living in sin. But um, are you okay if our relationship is non-exclusive? And you don't have to worry about her cheating on you. Well, it wouldn't be cheating if you, if you have a contract, a verbal agreement. But you wouldn't have to worry and you shouldn't worry. Because uh, jealousy is for insecure guys. Uh, but the thing is, as she likes you more and more, it doesn't matter if you see other girls. She is going to be too afraid to lose you to, 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 to see other men. And if she, if she gets too jealous because she is only human and all people uh, get jealous, and she chooses to to take revenge by being with another guy well that's going to just encourage you to see more girls so so you have to have fire and desire you have to be enthusiastic and sometimes we just don't feel like seeing so many girls so we need motivation so how are you going to motivate yourself well if your wife is seeing other men you would be more motivated to see other women and you would but but she would only do that because she is jealous because you had a verbal agreement bef when she when she proposed to you you ask her are you okay with 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 with, with me being non monogamous that's the way you put it don't say open relationship because that's a two way street are you okay with me being non monogamous because that's my lifestyle and 100% i guarantee you that if she's the one proposing to you she is going to say that she's okay with it whether she means it or not but a deal is a deal and you are not being dishonest if you make that deal now, once you made the deal, she's going to cook for you. You don't need a maid. You don't need to hire a maid. You don't need to hire a maid to clean and wash your, your side chick, also known as your girlfriend or wife or whatever. Just consider her as a side chick. She doesn't have to be as beautiful as other women that you're seeing better for you because she is not going to walk because if you're handsome and she's plain she can be your wife but she will still remain uh, your side chick so Ah, the women are going to like you so much more if you are married. Romans, the ancient Romans used to say a woman gets married to be more attractive to her lover. Well, that, that works for men too. Men should get married to be more attractive to women they really like don't even think about falling in love with your wife just like 
kings during the Middle Ages, when they had political marriages. Your wife is not there for you to love her. Your wife is there so you don't have to cook for yourself and so that all the girls feel that you are not hungry for physical intimacy. And when they, when they, they might, you might be married, but the other, the girls are thinking that, that all the women in, in town are chasing you because you don't seem hungry. Okay. So I'm not saying that you should get married. Maybe that's not your lifestyle. But I'm saying that if you are in any type of non-monogamous lifestyle or, or serial, you're a serial monogamist or, or you're uh, uh, in a polygynous lifestyle or you juggle women, you know, you have 12 at a time, but but you see one of them has a bad attitude, so, so you dump her and you find another, a replacement. Marriage is not going to destroy your lifestyle as long as you have an honest verbal agreement that bef when, when that woman proposes, first she's going to propose to you would you please uh, uh, be my boyfriend? And you are going to, to say, well, are you fine with me not being monogamous? Because I'm not into, uh, I, my, my lifestyle isn't monogamous. And she's going to say yes. The same thing when you get married. And don't smother her with, with gifts. She gives you a gift, you give her a gift. But you see, you make way more money than she does. So the gift should be proportional to her salary, not to your salary. Otherwise, you are compensating and that means you are not self-confident and you have a low self-esteem and you are trying to buy love and she is not going to respect you if you do that, even if she smiles and 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 makes a video blog uh, episodes together with you and pretends like she is very happy. Well, Hillary pretended like she was very happy with Bill when when Bill was uh, with Monica Lewinsky. Women are natural born actresses and they, they sometimes they have uh, their self-esteem is average and they really care what other people think about them. So she is not going to show that she is not content with the relationship even if she hates it. So let's say she's uh, very jealous and, 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 and you're going out with other, you're having some kind of uh, relationships, commercial, non-commercial, partners in crime, uh, whatever, uh, with other girls. She doesn't feel happy, but she is going to, to, to brag what a great guy you are. Because she doesn't want other girl, her, her girlfriends to think that she is a loser. So you can totally get away with getting married and that would have no effect on your lifestyle. And if you don't get married, buy a wedding band. Buy a wedding band and put it on your on your on your uh, 
finger. And that's going to make other girls like you more because they know that you are dependable and reliable and all that boring stuff. Actually, men who are reliable and dependable are boring and women don't like them. It's more about not being hungry because if you are single, 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 very, very single, they're going to wonder why no other woman likes you and that's going to hurt your cause. So going back to the question uh, about this channel, what is it about and well i obviously am not uh some people say oh i'm just doing it for shits and giggles well those people have nothing to say they talk because they need to say something I'm certainly not one of those people. I have so much to say, but I'm not going to say even 1% of it here because there, 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 this is not my turf. They're administrators and I am the boss. I decide what I'm going to talk about. I decide about what the format is going to be. I decide what the terms of service are going to be. I decide I'm a dictator. I'm not going to permit anyone to alter my content. Nietzsche, Friedrich Nietzsche, and this is in the preface to Ayn Rand's The Fountainhead. He, Friedrich Nietzsche, the great poet, he is not such a great philosopher, but he is a great poet. He said, a noble, a noble man has reverence for his soul. So all the little mistakes, all the little imperfections, you know, I might have a pimple or, a, or, or you know, a wart or, or I, I may not look perfect, you know, facial tattoos, whatever. This is my soul and nobody messes with my soul and nobody messes you know, let's say I make a typing error when I'm typing. I'm not going to go to Barnes & Noble and publish my book at Barnes & Noble because I'm not going to let any mofo decide, you know, attack my soul, spit into my soul. I'm doing... 95% of things or 98.2% of things according to the protocol and the rest of it, my errors are a part of my soul. My mistakes are part of my soul and I'm not going to permit no publisher or no platform host Their IQ is here, and my IQ is here. So how is it that an inferior is going to decide what, what his better, what's good for his better? Those are parasites. They're evil. They're unable to create anything of their own, anything the only thing they can do is distort something the, 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 the creator makes. The, the great person is, is, is the founder, is the founder of religions, 
is an inventor. He is the fountainhead. And there is a parasitic relationship between the, the creator who creates values for, for, for himself primarily, and only after that for, for the little folk. folk. And there is another kind of person called, you know, the, the parasite. And those parasites usually choose to work as editors, correctors, censors, critics, naysayers, administrators. I have no regard for those people because they're evil and they cannot create anything. They're, they have a complete inability to create. All they can do is twist. Twist what you make. Change it. Make it serve their secretive, underhanded agenda. They want to brainwash people, but they cannot even they cannot even invent brainwashing. They take something from a great mind and they twist it to be a half-truth instead of a truth. And then they use that to brainwash the, the, the viewers of their platform or, 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 or their readers, if it's a publishing company. So we have come to the topic of power. And why, why power makes us better people, because when we don't have power, we are flustered and frustrated, and we become aggressive. But when we do have power, we don't compensate by, by, you know, when we do have power, when there are people who you think have power, but they don't. Because there are different forms of power or pillars of power. Money is the worst because uh, the researchers found that if you have more than a certain amount of money, it, uh, you actually become less happy. And all money is good for is compensation. I have a lot of gold, jewelry, I have a lot of uh, designer clothes, and I sent it all away. And, and now I have training outfits. Anything, sir, uh, you know, anything that smothers you is bad for you. It's not good for you, for your character. It's not going to make you stronger. You need to lead a Spartan life. To, to, you know, you need the bare necessities, and you can still have power with that, because there are other pillars or forms of power, and another one is fame, and why I'm here on YouTube is to become famous, and I only have four subscribers. Because my channel was a non-channel account for four years and only one month ago I decided to start a channel and, and published my first video about 45 days ago. And the YouTube algorithm 
works in such a way that when you get a YouTube account, you have to publish one YouTube video per day for the first month of having a YouTube account at all. And then you would have millions of viewers after a year or two. But if you have a YouTube account for four years, but you haven't published anything, and then suddenly you, you decide to start at your own channel, uh, the YouTube algorithm is not going to, to help you. It's, 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 you are not going to get subscribers. And you see, I shut down my Facebook account. I shut down my Instagram account. I, I don't, I have a, a VK account, but I haven't used it for like a year. I am a neo-ludist, and I think all the digital technology is, is distracting us from, from the offline life, and that's why I'm not really good with digital technology, nor, and I pride myself on not under, 